What's up, YouTube? Brian here. Welcome back for another installment of 1517 Films, where in every episode we're always contending for the faith, once for all, delivered to the saints. Alrighty, so we're talking about another vain tradition of men today on 1517 Films that's not quite so vain. And while it is a tradition, that doesn't inherently mean that it's bad and we should shy away from it. We're talking about veiling crucifixes. Now, this is something that is done in liturgical churches that uh, you see it on Ash Wednesday. The church veils the crucifix in a dark violet, dark purple veil, uh, hiding it from your sight. And this is a very strange and striking thing. When you walk into a sanctuary, there's always that big, beautiful crucifix there. Oh, veiled. Why? Well, the fact that you noticed, that's why. The fact that you saw that something that you've always seen is hidden from your sight, that's why. Because it's a striking visual. Hey, something's happening. All of these traditions that we do have in the church are meant to teach the faith, to confess what we believe to the people in a visual way. So while there are some traditions that are less than appropriate, there are many, many others of them that are very good. And veiling a crucifix is a very good tradition. Now, the, the, the ancient tradition of veiling a crucifix is actually much more striking in that many things in the sanctuary were veiled. It wasn't just the crucifix. Things were hidden from your sight. But let's stick with what we do today, veiling the crucifix. Now, purple is not only a color of royalty to show us the color uh, of Christ's royalty, but it's also uh, a color of sorrow over sin and repentance. And uh, in ancient days, the only way to make purple, to make violet garments, was uh, the blood of snails. So in that as well, purple was chosen because in ancient days, it could not be made without the shedding of blood. And the, the righteousness that we receive from Christ is not credited to us outside of his blood shed for us. So that's why purple or violet. Uh, I suppose I could say purple and violet interchangeably. It's not like it's Advent and we're debating whether or not that one candle is pink or rose. That, let's not get started on that. So, but veiling a crucifix. So you go in on Ash Wednesday, this crucifix is veiled, and you're sitting here thinking, these Lutherans, aren't they the ones that always proclaim we preach Christ crucified or crux sola est nostra theologia, the cross alone is our theology? What's up with that? It teaches us something. It teaches us mainly about the hiddenness of God's glory. You see, uh, mainline American Protestantism sees promises of glory in the Bible, and they don't associate with them with the new heaven and the new earth, the kingdom to come at Christ's return. They associate them with how God wants us to live today, this victorious life, this every day of Friday, this find your purpose, this send me a seed offering of a thousand dollars and I'll send you a tissue that I sneezed on and you'll have your blessings now. Christianity is not about blessings now. Christianity is about the glory of God hidden in suffering. Jesus said to pick up your cross and follow me. Jesus says, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. We worship a God that is clearly present, but also hidden from us. We see now uh, dimly in a mirror, as in a mirror, but then we shall see the fullness. And so, when it comes to that glory, that divinity of Christ, that glorification of the Son of God, well, Jesus most often makes reference to that at the cross. This is the glorification of God. This is the Son of Man being lifted up, just like that serpent was lifted in the desert and the people looked upon it and they were healed. Christ would be lifted up on the cross. And that is hidden in his suffering and in his agony, is the glory of God. Lutherans make a distinction between law and gospel. And if we look at some of the verses of the Bible, we can clearly see that they're law, so we'll paint them blue. 
and we look at some of the verses of the Bible, we can clearly see those are gospel. We'll paint them red. But when we get here, when we get to the cross, that is law and gospel at the same time. That is the innocent son of God suffering the wrath of God in place of sinners, the law, but also the grace and mercy and the good news that is the gospel that he does this for you and in your place as a propitiation for your sin. And he pleads on your behalf, Father, forgive them. And he credits his righteousness to you while your wretchedness is placed upon him. Again, another reason to choose purple. But so that's that's basically it. It is to teach us the hiddenness of Christ. This is why uh, it's also the glory of God is also hidden in the humanity of Christ. He is God from all of eternity. Uh, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Genesis, we read, God said, let there be and there was. That's why in John, when he talks about the word became flesh, he says all things were created by him. So Jesus Christ, the second person of the Holy Trinity, is God from eternity. And then in the miracle of his incarnation at Christmas, we sing, veiled in flesh, the Godhead see. What a beautiful, beautiful hymn. Always standing up for the hymns because they are so much better than anything contemporary Christianity can throw at us today with a good guitar riff and a drum solo. Veiled in flesh, the Godhead see. Hail the incarnate deity. So, uh, during Lent, we are waiting for, we are looking at the glory of God, which is manifest in the incarnation of Christ at his suffering on the cross, when the Son of God was lifted up. That is the glory that Christ came to seek. Not, not that shining moment on the Mount of Transfiguration where we got a little glimpse of what it was like. And certainly not how we see Jesus in the book of Revelation, especially when John, who was a disciple of Christ and saw him and fell at his feet, terrified. And Jesus was like, hey, it's me. So the glory of God, true glory of God, is hidden, not only in his incarnation and in his humanity, where he assumed into his divine nature, our human nature, his glory and the glory of the Christian life is hidden in his suffering and his death and his resurrection. And even a veiled crucifix teaches us the resurrection because we know we are waiting for Easter Sunday when the veil is lifted when the full glory of everything that Christ accomplished for us on the cross in his suffering and death is finally revealed to us in an empty tomb that ought have been ours, but the sinless Son of God rested in that tomb in our place. Veiling a crucifix is a beautiful tradition of the church. It, it, it commands that we focus. And, and as these in the ancient church, everything in the sanctuary was veiled. All these pictorial representations, these teaching tools of the faith were veiled. And what was left when you couldn't see them anymore? You had to listen. You had to listen to the word of God. So the book of Romans teaches us faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. All these beautiful teaching tools that we have pale in comparison to the spoken word of God. So during Lent, we veil the crucifixes in deep purple to show us that the glory of God at his crucifixion is veiled in the suffering, in the taking on of our sin, wrapping himself in our sin so that he could robe us in his righteousness. This is a teaching tool. Doesn't mean you have to veil a crucifix. There's no tradition to veil a crucifix in your home. It's a personal decision that I've made to help teach my children. So I hope that explains a little bit about what you might see if you go to a liturgical church and the crucifix is veiled. Until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.